Hello, are you ready for hints, tips, and tricks? It's time for homework advice. There are a couple ways you can approach this problem. Basically, this is similar to what we just did in, la in, in week three, in unit three, where we used this grading scale to determine whether an input variable was an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F. Okay, so it's pretty much similar to what you did last week. So part of what you're going to do is, is look at last week's solution and use it. Although again, I would encourage you to not start there because this is a different problem and it uses this, it uses this, but not at the beginning. So if you start here, you're not gonna know where to plug in the code that you, you wrote last time, okay? And also you're gonna have to adapt the code that you wrote last time. So I would encourage you to say, all right, I know how to do this already, but don't start with that code because that's just gonna make it difficult. This is a different problem. So let's make sure we understand the problem first because this is, again, the first thing you wanna do is understand the problem. So I guess tip number one, if I'm giving advice here, tip number one, is do not do not start with the previous solution because it's out of place take the knowledge that you acquired from the previous solution and apply it here but don't copy the code and just try to work, rework it. It's not gonna help you, okay? Use what you know and not copy and rework. Okay, that's tip number one. So tip number two is use the problem simplification approach, right? We have a, a loop that continually asks us to input grades, right? And then when we type quit, it stops inputting grades, okay? So what kind of loop is that? What type of loop do we need? All right, let's think simply about it. So when does this loop stop? It stops, it, it, we're at the mercy of the person inputting numbers. And the loop will only stop when someone types exactly quit. So this is a sentinel controlled loop or an indefinite loop. So our strategy here should be to use a while true. All right, while true. So let's sort of think through this while true and what it might look like. Let's start writing a little bit of code to sort of help you. So I'll, let's just do while true. And then I'm gonna input, I'm just gonna say text input, enter a grade, what does it say? Enter students total points, type stats or type quit. I'm just going to copy this because, boy, man, I don't want to type that. See, there's certain things worth copying, like trivial things. Things that you can do, you know, with your hand behind, tied behind your back if you knew how to type. So there is what I want to do in the loop. When do I stop? I stop when, if text equals quit, then I break the loop, right? Okay, put in total points, total points, total points, quit. Okay, easy enough. Now, the question is, what am I doing in the body of the loop down here? That's what you got to figure out, right? And this is where the true algorithm comes into play. So what happens when I type in stats? When I type in stats, I should print out I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. When I type in stats, 
I should print out the total number of scores input, and then the count of A's, the count of B's, the count of C's, the count of D's, the count of F's, and their percentage. What does this 66 represent? Two divided by three. What is this 33%? One divided by three. What does this C zero represent? Zero divided by three. Okay? So I need variables. This is the next hint. Oop, I'm in the wrong spot. Silly me. The next hint is you're going to need variables to keep track of the number of A's, B's, C's, etc. in addition to the number of grades entered. You're going to need that. Because to print this out, you must store the data that you collect. All right. Now, I'm not going to do all that because then I end up writing the, writing the whole program for you. But I do want you to think about how this might work, right? So if, if the text is stats, what do I want to do? What do I want to do here? Well, I want to print this out. Because right, you type stats. Right, so I want to print out, you know, I'm just going to say print. I'm going to do what's called a placeholder technique. I'm going to say print. Print. Stats go here. I don't know how to do that yet, but I know they go there. Okay? And run it. I'm going to type in stats, and it says stats go here. I, I don't have the stats yet, right? If I type in 120, it also doesn't collect that and put that in as, I don't know what that would be. What is that going to be, a B? Yeah, 120 is a B. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything there. But now you're getting closer to understanding what to, what to do and what goes where. Okay, now, why is it if, if? It could be L if, right? But if this if is true, it breaks the loop. So you're done. So that's why it's okay to just make it if, right? Because if this happens, breaks the loop, you might as well just go in and test another if. It doesn't matter. It could be L if. doesn't matter. Um, now I have else. Now what am I going to do if I make it here? If you didn't type quit and you didn't type stats, then you darn well have better typed a number. Now I didn't ask you to handle bad input, like if somebody types in whatever the heck they want. Like, let me just run it one more time here. Enter stats or quit, and I just type in that. Right, that's going to make the program crash. That's outside the scope of what I asked you to solve here for this homework assignment. It's a lot of busy work to handle that. Don't worry about it, okay? Just solve the problem at hand, okay? So in this else clause, what are we going to do down here? What, let's think about, in plain English, what we're going to do here. Well, we're going to figure out this grade that we enter, this grade that we enter, we're going to figure out if it goes into the A variable, the B variable, the C variable, the D variable, or the F variable, right? So we are going to figure out, I'm going to use an F string here because I'm fancy, figure out which letter grade uh, the text is. And put it. See, I'm kind of almost writing an algorithm um, while I write my code. I do this a lot because there are things I know and things I don't. And I don't want the things I don't know yet to get in the way of the things that I do know, right? I do know that the stats are going to go here. Do I need to figure out how that works yet? Do I know how that's going to work yet? No. I'm not going to write my programs linearly, and neither are you. And you shouldn't get in the habit of trying to write them linearly. So I put in like 130, and it says figure out which letter grade 130 is and put it in a variable. Now, this exact thing on line 8 is, is mostly the code that we wrote last week. So now you know approximately where that code should go. And you have an, an inkling on how to approach it. 
Now, some last uh, bits of advice for you. This, you can now think of as your algorithm, right? So if I come down here to the algorithm, I can say, you know, come down here and say, loop, and then input text. If text is quit, stop looping. If text is stats, print stats. Else, figure out, blah, 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 right? So you can see how, yeah, I didn't write my algorithm first, but I also didn't know how I was going to do my algorithm. That's okay. You know, this is why people like Python, is you can write a little code and use that code to help you figure out a strategy for which to complete the task at hand. All right. So two minor things that you need to be aware of. You have to convert text to an int down here. So down here, I need to say, you know, grade is int text. I need to do that because I need it to be a number, right? And you have to just make an assumption that what they type in is good and not, you know, not gibberish. And then, so this would be grade. Um, And now 150 is a number. That's number one. Number two, if you're still confused, what you should probably start with is this advice here. Just count scores. So I'll give you a deeper hint if you still need a hint. So my deeper hint is let's track scores. So I always should initialize variables. So up here I would have my A, you know, A grade is zero, you know, B grade is zero. You should initialize all your variables. So I'm gonna uh, do scores. So say scores, zero. And then what happens when you come down here? Well, scores equals scores plus one. Scores is the number of grades that you have inputted. I'm just counting the number of numbers you're giving me. And then down here in my stats, now I can print this line here. I can say print scores. Make that an F string. Boom. Now you see how I did that, right? I, I figured out scores. I figured out the logic to make to to I figured out the logic to address scores. Then I added it to the stats. So you should do the same. Figure out the logic to to collect A's, add it to the stats. Logic to collect B's, add it to the stats. Logic to collect C's, add it to the stats. If you take the incremental approach, you're not going to put so much code out there, and then half of it's not going to work, and you're not going to know why because you're gonna add the code a little bit at a time and make sure that it works. It's a great strategy to use. So let's try this. Um, uh, 150, 130, 120, stats. Three scores so far have been entered. Three scores. Let's add a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth, and a seventh, and let's get stats again. Now there's seven scores. See that? So that part is working. And now I have a pretty good understanding of what this program's doing. And doing the rest is now taking sort of what you did in, in the first uh, Professor Xavier program, that is the one where you figured this part out, and sort of integrating that into the code here. And then of course you want to remove your your prints. You won't need those prints anymore. Okay. So that's a huge hint. But if you need the hint, I'm glad to give you the hint because what I want you to do is figure it out and sort of understand the process as you go. I know these things can be challenging. So let's go down here to the let's impress Professor X part. So how do you do this? I'm going to give you a little tip. I'm going to take this one as an example. And I'm going to come down here and let's add a new cell. And this cell is going to be 
how to print asterisks, right? So there is a command. Check this out. Let's print an asterisk. Let's print a question mark. And then after it, I'm going to say times eight. What you're going to get are eight question marks. Or maybe I want to do, hey, let's print a hyphen, and I want to print 12 of those hyphens. So the way you're making this bar chart up here is you're printing, if there's 12 A's, you print 12 asterisks. So you might do something like this. You might say print the letter A, right? And then after that, we're going to print, I guess you'd use an F string, right? We're going to print asterisk times 12, where 12 is the number of A's, right? And there you go, you get you get 12 asterisks. As opposed to where you might print a B, you might print a B, and you only need, like the B's only have, like maybe there's only six B's. So there you go. So that's how you make your little bar chart. Okay, that's just a hint in case you want to really impress me and, and print it out like that. Well, later on, we're going to learn how to make real bar charts, but it's always fun to learn how to make little ASCII text-based bar charts. Okay, that's this unit's homework advice. Thanks for watching. Bye now.